Hi, David Odell here with Odell Complete Concrete. This is part three of a part, a We're three part use, series. Like, a chisel. So this is the final Chip some one of this stuff this down, get it site. out of the way. This is so actually three going. days after nice the pour. And smooth. You can see how that concrete's drying out fairly slowly because it's still pretty dark. When it's completely cured gotcha. out, it's going to be all one color, right and a really light gray. But all these forms that you see in there, that's to allow for the inlay brick that's going to be going in there. Brick it. bands. Split brick. It's not a full brick because they won't fit in there. So these happen. Oh, you there. could buy full brick, but you'd have, to cut them. you'd have to cut them all in half and make them thinner. But they do make a brick that's smaller. The nice thing about buying the full brick, if that's all you can find, if you cut them in half, you can use both sides of them. It might actually save you some money, to be honest with you. So we have uh, th this. All these inlays were set with two by two, so it's really just an inch and a half deep on these recesses. It's a monolithic pour. The rebar the reinforcement runs all the way through underneath these recesses, so it's all one piece. In other words, when you drive over with a vehicle, everything moves as one piece. So you're not going to get grout failure, brick failure, brick separation, you know, concrete separation from the brick for movement. It's all going to move together. That's the beauty of this particular technique. Now, for the looks of it, um, they're chipping it down because uh, they're scared. They don't want to start laying brick and then hit a high sp high spot and then have to break out the cords, the chipping hammer. Instead, they'll go ahead and just hit what looks high just to be on the safe side. Now, here's your thin set. And this thin set happens to be mixed with a little bit of mortar. It gives you a little more body and it dries a little quicker. So you still got your bonding that the thin set offers you really good bonding. And then you have the mortar which gives you more body and makes it dry a little quicker. So you can keep moving along. You don't keep you don't have that brick movement. Once you stick it, you can forget it because it's not moving anymore. Thin set I've noticed once you put a brick down, they they have a tendency to move with the next one. Pure thin set. But when you get the mortar mixed in with it, you can set a brick and it's not moving again when you drop the next one behind it. That's why I like to mix the thin set with the mortar. You can do everything faster. Left the uh, outside form on for elevation so we can just level across. When you're setting these bricks, you just put any straight edge. I mean, it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be a level, any kind of a straight edge. But you just want to maintain the existing slope of what you're working off with the brick. Otherwise, it's not going to look very good. You like, that, for instance, if you have a driveway at one slope and then your brick ribbon on the edge is at a different slope, it's going to be pretty obvious. So you just want to maintain the existing slope on something like this. Now we're using a Milwaukee four foot level occasionally to align the brick. Because bricks are never perfect. So you can align them on the edge so that when you look down it you have a nice straight line on one side or the other. Easier to lay. Ow. I need some knee pads. All right, all right. See the technique. Oh. See, I have too much underneath here, so it's like spewing out. This is my level. We already have established levels, so no need for a speed square or speed level or anything like that.
you have to find a straight straight stake some stakes aren't straight and that that's pretty typical of any wood you want to keep those grout joints down at least a half inch you know or so so when you go ahead and put your final grout you have a little something in there though you can see how straight that is and it lined up with the existing brick ribbon border most strip that separated the lawn from the planter over there when you're running a thin set it's not as crucial that you wet the bricks prior to setting that's another good thing about thin set versus just setting in mortar you know when I'm setting these ribbons I just use my fingertip as a spacer for my grout joints I just continually do that have one finger in there and that and then I use that same finger my index finger in between the bricks all the way down and they're all the same that way unless you change guys you get a, cha a guy change on your bricks your different different finger size that might have an effect but the same guys running through the whole line um, it works out pretty nicely the key to putting these inlays though really because you have vehicle traffic in this situation is you don't want a lot of air pockets underneath the brick to your base because where if you do have a lot of air pockets and you're just um, skimping on your your base you can crack some bricks driving over them in this case you can see they're um, sinking in it's pushing up some excess material around the perimeter so you know at that point there's no voids brick has a lot lower strength than concrete so sooner the sooner you get concrete sitting on a solid concrete base the better you are when you're running down your brick ribbons and you have two adjoining concrete slabs at the elevation you want to match it's really easy to do any straight edge like I was saying before you just match both sides top of brick and, and you're on the money when the grout goes in on this brick this is really crucial a lot of people fail on this particular point but what you have to do, because you have a radius inside edge on your existing concrete, so when you, if you were to just throw the grout in there and that grout overlapped on that radius of the concrete, you're going from zero to three quarter inch deep, or actually it's a half inch radius. So it's zero to half inch deep grout over overlapping that concrete radius. It's gonna crack off. It's gonna chip off as soon as the car hits it. So what you have to do is run your same edger that you use on the concrete along your grout line when your grout goes in so you have a, a nice joint there in case it does crack there at that point it's not going to pop your mortar Once we get to the grout, and you're going to see um, how the grout is radius edged to the concrete, and you'll see the, the joint along there that's created by that. That gives you the freedom of movement in case it does crack. Cracking is one thing, but when you got massive separation or settlement, that's a different thing. One is structural, and one is just visual when you're running your spacing between you know your center line the way this is set 
what you want to do really to utilize all full bricks is just change your spacing a little bit that way you have all full bricks in the grout joint will will very very minimal not really noticeable but you can still get away with full bricks but just by adjusting the spacing on the bricks got two more bricks to place in right here and that will be it after that we're gonna start grouting well Juan's already grouting up here now here's the mortar going in here you've got a grout bag this is just basically your typical bag mix mortar right out of Home Depot or Lowe's or local hardware they all have them it's a type S you have to mix it very thoroughly because if you get any chunks in it make sure your mixing container that you're mixing it in in this case it's a wheelbarrow you don't have chunks of other other debris falling off your wheelbarrow because once it goes into the grout bag it's going to clog your grout bag up all right it's, li it's like icing on a cake okay shoot that way pastry chef pastry chef over here chef Juan. Now once you've grout bagged it, you can just scrape off the excess once it gets a little bit tighter. You just scrape off the excess, excess and then sponge it, wet sponge everything off. Run your edge or same edge you used on the concrete initially, the half inch radius, edge your grout, sponge it again, and now you're, you're, you're completed. So here's a better look at what I was just describing. You've grouted it in, now you packed it in, any voids, scraped off the excess, hit the ends of the brick to make sure that you're solid everywhere. Run your edge, or whenever you run your edge, you create more excess mortar material, so you gotta scrape that off, and now you're ready to sponge. And as it dries, you can just use a, a nice soft broom to brush off the excess material because there's a lot of sand that you generated through this whole process that will accumulate. You just sweep it off to the side. Now after that edge, you can see how much excess material went over the brick. Because it's at a drier stage, it's not really sticking to the brick, so it's easy to sweep off, especially if you have a nice dry broom. If you got a wet broom, you're just spreading debris and making a bigger mess, so you want to make sure your broom is dry. So here's how it looks when you've got all your brick in there, edged grout joints. You've got a nice walkway separate. This is very similar to how this was originally done. If you go to part one, this is actually part three, but if you go to part one, you see the beginning photos of this location. You see the asphalt driveway and the walkway. This is really similar to how they initially did this particular project when the house was built because that was the uh, an original asphalt driveway that was in here that was removed so this really simulates the designer's perspective of this entire project this whole area this is his idea so it's kind of going the same way but now instead of asphalt we have concrete and a couple more ribbons through the driveway big improvement there's a good close-up on how you edge that grout line that way that grout doesn't crack off the top of that 
inside radius of the concrete anyway thank you for watching my videos and this turned out to be a good job um, make sure you share subscribe and if you hit when you hit subscribe hit the notification bell that way you'll get notified on the next video thank you have a good one